You might have heard recently about a game called Control, and you might have wondered what it was all about, really. Hopefully in this video I can give you a little bit of insight. It's the latest game from Remedy. They're the team behind Alan Wake, Quantum Break, and Max Payne, and you can probably classify this game as an action game, although it is extremely creepy at times, I will say. Remedy and 505 Games have sponsored this video, and I'm going to do my best, without spoiling the story too much, beyond setting the scene, to get across to you what it's like to play Control, and why, in my opinion, I think you should give it a go. If you're not wanting to have this game spoiled for you, even remotely, then you should probably just go and play it for yourself. The team were also kind enough to send me this swag kit that was filled with a bunch of control-related items, which is awesome, and it came with a little puzzle for me to solve as well. But don't worry, it only took me about five seconds to figure out what the code to unlock it would be. I wonder if you guys can figure it out. Control is about a woman called Jessie Faden, and she's searching for her lost brother. It's been 17 years since she last saw him, and to try and find him, she now must explore a government facility, and she's been looking for it since her brother disappeared. But this isn't just some bog-standard world that we're living in. Things are very different here. The game centers around the Federal Bureau of Control, the FBC, and this agency is presiding over a force that seems to warp the laws of reality. The facility you enter is called the Oldest House, and it's here where you take on the role of Jesse Faden and fight back against a deadly force known as the Hiss. They've invaded the facility, and they're trying to take over and further corrupt reality. You're thrust right into the story. There's no preamble. You pretty much take control straight away and you take over as the director of the FBC after discovering the previous director dead on the floor and you pick up his service weapon. The service weapon is the firearm that you wield for the entire story, but it's alive. It can change and it can morph into different forms of weapon and you unlock those as you progress through the story. Alongside that, as Jesse, you possess a bunch of different superpowers. Telekinesis and levitation, those are the ones you're going to end up using the most, and they define the type of combat that this game offers. Combine the service weapon firearm and your ability to pick up and force throw almost any item you can see at your enemies, and levitate at the same time, Control has this really freeform action where once enemies are released upon you, you can take them on in pretty much any way you see fit. For example, you could walk past a side table, or a gas canister, or a fire extinguisher, for example. You can pick that up via telekinesis, and you can throw it at your enemy. It sounds a little bit comical when I explain it that way, but once you see it in action, and you start doing this thing over and over again, that comedy value does very much fade away. You can start to work together little combinations. You can dart around cover, you can dodge incoming fire, you can levitate, pick something up, and smash your enemy to pieces with whatever you had in your hand. It could be a wet floor sign, for all you know. It's all very, very fluid. The further you progress into the story, the more you're able to do. You can upgrade Jesse's set of skills by increasing the health pool, you can activate more telekinesis opportunities, and you can increase your melee strength, just in case enemies happen to get a little bit too close to you. And destruction, that plays a massive part in the combat loop as well, because not only can you pick up items that are laying around, but you can just crack concrete walls, rip a chunk off, and you can throw that at your enemy as well. When enemies fire rockets at you and they hit the walls or cover behind you, that breaks away and suddenly you've got more ammunition that you can use against them. There's even an ability that lets you take control of incoming enemy grenades and rockets and you can turn them around mid-air and send them back from where they came from. The lighting effects are top-notch as well, lighting the darkest of areas with this blood-red mist when the hiss appear as if from nowhere, and explosions really test the contrast levels of your TV. The audio design is fantastic as well. When you're firing your service weapon, you can really feel it coming through the controller. The vibration stuff is all controllable from the settings. When it comes to combat, this game does feel really, really good. This building that you're fighting your way through trying to reclaim for the Bureau, you're trying to work out what happened to your brother at the same time, 
It's bigger on the inside than its exterior might suggest. You're not bound by the physical structure of the building, and it features a massive number of areas that you can explore and unlock. And something that I immediately noticed is that Control isn't a linear combat experience. As you progress through different missions and you open up more of the building, you realise that despite the story leading you on a particular path, the map opens up for you to explore, so you can go back and complete side missions well after completing elements of the main storyline, or if you're a big collector like me, you can just go and explore every single office, every bathroom and corridor, and you can pick up a huge number of lore items, and each of those gives you a little bit of insight into what the FBC is doing or what it does with the forces that they're protecting. And it's totally your choice. If you want to learn more about what happens in this story or not, if you want to find out more about the FBC or not, then that's totally up to you. I found myself multiple times getting a little bit more information from picking up some of these items. It gives you a little bit more of a look into the narrative and you start to piece things together on your own. Control does that in the main storyline as well, but it's nice to see that bleeds into the side missions too. And whilst you are wandering around through all of those offices and all those corridors and janitor closets and canteens or whatever else you happen to find, you will notice that it is quite easy to get lost if you stray off the beaten path too much. But don't worry, the entire level is signposted. This was pointed out to me by one of the developers when I went and played Control at Gamescom a couple of weeks ago. All of the signposts let you know where to go to get back to some of the major points on the map, so you can work your way through this labyrinth of corridors if you want to, but I will say it's not particularly easy. There is an in-game map that you can use and you can bring that up whenever you like, but the signs, there are all the major forks along the way. If you are someone that needs a little bit of a reminder or you're just like me and you struggle to remember what you had for lunch yesterday, let alone how many left and right turns you just took, you can bring up the in-game map at any time. It will reveal all parts of the map that you've unlocked and you've explored. And talking about the map, the areas of the map also feature these things called control points. These are the locations that the Hiss has corrupted, and often you're tasked with liberating these points. You have to expel the Hiss from the immediate area. Usually they're guarded by a bunch of corrupted FBC agents and you have to take those down first, but they also act as a progress point in the story as well. So if you happen to die during combat, maybe you got overwhelmed by too many enemies, this point becomes your last respawn point. You can also access fast travel from here as well, so if you don't want to run through the entire building to get where you need to be, then you can fast travel to the closest point, and then you can do that last part on foot. Even though I really, really want to, I'm not going to go into too much more detail about control in this video. I just wanted to sort of set the scene for you. I don't want to spoil the story that you end up being a part of, but just from the first four or five hours or so, I'm really enjoying the game. And what stands out most is the combat for me. You just feel like you're some kind of superhero or a god with your abilities, just smashing your enemy to pieces. And especially if you're doing it with something like a garbage can, that never gets old. The Remedy team has done a really good job with Control, and I'm excited to finish off the story myself, which will probably be in the next day or so, considering I've played nothing else since yesterday morning. But let me know what you think down below in the comments section, if you play Control yet or you're considering it. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.